the MIT. Oh, sorry, I started recording. <laughs> no, <laughs> no worries. Bad. Um, we, we're part of the team of the MIT 22 hack, um, and our project is inclusive testing in VR. A quick agenda before we start, um, we will do some team introductions and then um, break the talk up into three separate parts. Um, first, we'll talk about the actual deliverable that we created at the hackathon. Next, we'll talk about our experience at the hackathon, and then finally, takeaways and conclusions. And then, of course, we'll have some time for a Q&A as well. And let's introduce the team first. And then I think um, Daisy is not on this call, so I can't see the, the video feeds. I, I um, think Daisy is on the call, but um, she's, uh, I think, auditing, like, in a class or something. Um, so maybe we can introduce her. Um, Daisy is uh, currently a master design student at UC Berkeley. Um, she is a designer as well as an H H HCI researcher and prototyper and is interested in XR and inclusive design, collaboration, and ed tech. She's worked on VR and AR educational games, um, as well as looks like a VR and web communication project. Awesome. Thank you, Hung. Mm -hmm. um, Hey, um, my name is Tejas. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I majored in marketing um, at a business school, but I work right now in the tech field um, at a very small startup focused on remote collaboration. Um, in my free time, I like to make different kinds of XR experiences that talk about the environment. Um, and yeah, that's that's me. Um, my name is Hung. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science from Stanford, Beatrice. Um, I'm currently a software engineer at 3Space Lab, working kind of on um, helping architects visualize their kind of buildings and architectural models. Uh, I'm interested in system design as well as XR as a medium to create serious games. Um, you can see on the right-hand side, I've worked on some storytelling type projects with stories of growing up in Vietnam, growing up Vietnamese in America, as well as VR and photogrammetry art pieces um, previously. Hi, uh, my name is Jaden Kim. I'm currently a grad student at NIU. I registered um, in a great design and media, the Master of Science. And I'm a XR user experience designer and prototyper. And I also work as an XR instructor for um, K-12 STEM education. My interest in, and I'm interested in like XR user experience design and uh, digital accessibility as specific for um, uh, visual impaired um, people. Hey everyone, my name is Nyan. Um, my pronouns is he, him. Um, as a philosopher, as a robotics software engineer at Robust AI, working in robotics perception. Um, next week, I will start PhD in computer science at Cornell University. And then in the next year at Cornell Tech in New York City. Um, looks like we have some people from Cornell um, here. So I look forward to um, future collaboration. Awesome. Um, now we are going to go into the meat of the presentation and first talk about our hackathon deliverable. Um, so we'll share some of the, the features of the actual project as well as the technology in, involved in developing the project. Um, but we are also going to start with a short video clip um, that kind of demonstrates uh, how the project looks. Um, and then next we'll talk about how the project works. So I'll hit play and I'll just maximize this and make sure the volume isn't too loud. Apart. 
colors are hard to tell apart. Confirm. Awesome. Okay. Ooh. There we go. Um, uh, so just to recap, um, the project that you just saw in the video um, was a, uh, it, it ended up being a user research, a user testing tool for user researchers and um, individuals inside a VR headset. Um, and before I talk about the actual, like the, the results, let me talk about the problems we were trying to solve with this project. And the problems were twofold. While experiencing a VR application, it's hard for users inside a VR headset to give or document feedback on their experience, um, especially if that user has certain accessibility needs. It's also hard to conduct user testing for VR um, on behalf of user researchers um, because it's uh, well, um, that struggle makes it very difficult for user researchers to receive feedback or test uh, extra experiences with the diverse range of communities, um, including the accessibility community. So there's two problems there. Um, and the solution we came up with um, uh, targeted three specific things. We wanted this project to be inclusive, insightful, and lightweight. And I'll hand it off to Hung to talk about the inclusive input and annotation features of this project. Thanks, Tejas. Um, the first part is inclusive annotation. And for us, this uh, specifically, our project included voice input, keyboard typing, as well as a VR screen reader to provide both a voice only workflow and, or a controller button uh, with visuals only workflow. Um, here you can see that you, um, there is an example scene with a desk of objects and a pop-up message to submit user feedback. Um, you can see that at the bottom, um, it says press or say confirm to record this comment. So you can, at any point, you can switch between the voice and the um, kind of controller button based uh, feature workflow. And then we also have an insightful data dashboard so once the user makes an annotation within VR, the user researcher um, would receive the annotation on the web portal. Um, it can be looked at async or it can be seen real time because we're just, this is all going over the web. You can, the user researcher doesn't need to physically be with um, the users while they're doing, um, giving feedback in order to see it live. And we also provide the three screenshots, which is first person view, um, third person view, as well as a bird's eye view in order to have, give the user researcher some context to the user feedback that was received. Um, and then you can see this is a picture of the web dashboard with information on feedback from a user, including images and text from their feedback session. And as Hong mentioned, users inside a VR headset can create annotations um, inside the VR experience. And from a development side, we wanted that to be very lightweight. So we built something that is uh, a very, kind of like a, a lightweight package for Unity developers that plugs into the Unity game engine with minimal development time. Uh, how it works is all developers need to do is import this small Unity package, drag very specific prefabs into the scene that they want to get feedback on or test, and they're all set to go. And as you mentioned earlier about some of our features, here we show the architecture of our We have a rectangular box, which represent our Unity package, and it includes several circular shapes that represent the components of a For example, we have speech to text, text to speech, um, the annotator, and the screenshot manager to um, help UX researcher and engineers to capture the data of the session. Um, our, our user can easily import their package into their VR project. On the right, have um, the web 
dashboard component. Um, this web dashboard is connected by a bridge um, with the lab box um, via the JSON protocol. And the data that we are sharing between these two components are the timestamp, the images, the, and the annotation. And we look forward to supporting more data. Um, thanks, Dan. Um, uh, we hope that all these features allow the XR development community to create better XR experiences for a wider range of audiences. Um, and hopefully this um, helps the VR ecosystem grow mature to what we think it can be. And now we'll talk about our hackathon experience. So uh, this is like a rough timeline of the hackathon days like chunked up um, into three different parts. Um, the first day we kind of like got together as a team and then the, uh, the rest of the days we worked on our project and um, we gave a demo. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, uh, this is uh, a picture of our team. We're sitting on these beanie bags um, at this hackathon space uh, at the MIT. Uh, I don't, I, not the media lab, but some MIT building, I forget. It's been a while, um, but we're just concepting um, our, our original pitches for, for the idea. So what was our original idea? Um, it was very different than what you just saw. Our original idea revolved around creating a tool that simulated different accessibility modes within a VR game. Uh, for example, this tool would allow developers to play their game as if they had low vision or as if they had low hearing. And this concept tried to bridge developer understanding of how accessible their game was at any given point in time. And although we'll definitely get into this later, I think it's important to note that Although we had good intentions, I'm sure you can already spot some problems with this approach, as well as problems in our own perspective of accessibility. Um, and again, we'll get to that just a bit. Um, and the image that's shown here is a list of uh, potential features that could be part of this quote unquote accessibility simulator. After we created our initial concept, we went to our hackathon Discord, um, which is a public resource that was available at the hackathon, and reached out to some mentors from the accessibility channel um, to get some feedback on our original concepts and thoughts. We were grateful enough to interact with the mentor who was happy to connect, to connect us with other mentors in the accessibility space. Um, and we also set up a Zoom call um, with these mentors to communicate our ideas and get feedback face-to-face. -face. And now Jaden will talk about this feedback um, as well as what we've learned. Uh, uh, thank you, Teja. Uh, yeah. So our second uh, day at the hackathon, we are very grateful to have like a you know interview session with our mentor at the hackathon. So and also we got uh, some multiple feedback from our initial design ideas. And I just want to say thank you again to our mentors uh, to participate in this session, like Dylan, Miles, and Ronald, Ren, and Jora. So during this uh, time, we received some like a very important comment. There are many, many great ideas, but I don't, I, I don't like to share like some precious like, comments that we consider during our second iteration session. The first one is accessibility is not a checklist. And then the next one is who is going to be advanced for this project and getting the input from actual users. And the other one idea is people with the disability involved in your process. And last one is create a clear persona. So after we finished the feedback session, we realized that there are two groups of persona in our project. The first is a user research group that received the user's feedback. In this case, um, include uh, designers and developer. And then the other pers persona is uh, the user that participating in this user testing. Uh, through our team meeting after the interview, uh, realized that we uh, mo most of our initial ideas were um, focused on user research, re user researcher, and then we have to admit that there is a lack of research on our users, 
uh, in this um, uh, user our initial idea. So in this second idea, uh, iteration session, we'd like to focus on developed uh, user-centric user testing tool. Uh, so first, we set it up more specific persona for our users. Our first persona in this case uh, was uh, partially visually impaired. And second persona was a uh, you know, lower hearing user. Due to the uh, tight schedule on the hackathon, we are not able to meet the, the actual user in, and have an interview section, but um, we checked uh, some Facebook group and then we also got some idea from website called like how low vision gamer user review from the last of the, us part two. So, and then we got a very great idea from those uh, research and then they uh, use um, screen reader and text to speech and then speech text to function. Also they use magnification and visual aids. So we try to use um, all this idea and then apply to our program and our great developers utilize like Google's speech text and uh, Microsoft Azure's text to speech technology to receive information from users and participating in user testing. And then user also can use their voice instead of directly typing on their, um, their controller. So in this environment can deliver all the messages, uh, your opinion to the user re researcher and uh, so they can apply for next development uh, stages. And also this feedback, all this feedback is automatically saved in the server we create and in all the user researcher, include developer designers have access users feedback uh, synchronously and asynchronously. And of course, this is only we assess when the users uh, uh, user uh, has given the consent. Next. Awesome. Um, so as Jaden mentioned, we had a lot to process from the feedback that we received. And we decided to ditch our, our original idea of an accessibility simulator. And instead, um, after some research, as well as talking to these mentors, concentrate on a problem that disproportionately affects the accessibility community, which is user testing of XR experiences. Within user testing, we found that the accessibility community um, found it hard to give feedback on XR experiences, and user researchers struggled to properly test with these communities. And this twofold problem was extremely daunting to tackle, but after a lot of whiteboarding and some Thai food, we created an approach that um, we spoke about in the beginning of this talk, which was a way for users inside a headset to annotate VR experiences. And at the same time, in, in real time, have that feedback linked to a web dashboard that user researchers could uh, use at any given point in time. Um, and this is a whiteboard um, oh, this is a picture of a whiteboard um, with a grid drawn on it um, that helps separate the tasks for each member of the team in the final hours of the hackathon. Um, and so you can see like the, uh, we have labels for the, the time, the, the literal hours in which tasks need to be done um, all the way from like 9 p.m. Um, to 11 p.m. on day three to 10 a.m. on day four. Um, so very, very, it's very, very tight, um, and we had to cut a few things, but we're extremely proud of the end result that came out of our hard work. And um, on day four, um, we had to present our um, end result project to the judges. And these are a few pictures of our demo day. So on the left is a picture of all our laptop screens with our slide decks and a copy of our VR sample scene running for judges and participants to try. Um, and on the right is Hung wearing a VR headset and probably getting ready for the next round of judges that we had to talk to. Um, and here are some mock-ups of an advanced annotation features that we did not really have time to implement. So on the left-hand side, um, at, on the left-hand side, the feature is to kind of have the sentiment on each annotation that allows the researcher to understand whether or not 
it is a positive annotation or a negative annotation, um, whether or not it's an improvement or like it's a complement. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see annotation preview as well as annotation tags to allow, again, user researchers to organize the annotations and to, oh, is this a, an issue with color? Is this an issue with audio? Is it an issue with interaction? Um, and as you can also, um, yeah, and we also want to support um, the voice or and or keyboard workflow. Um, and so that's why you can, there are still um, prompts to say, oh, either say this or say confirm or tap the button to confirm this comment. And yeah, I think these are features that we'll talk more as like, these are like features that we could implement in the future of the project, but we can talk more about, about that in a different slide. Um, and because the hackathon theme was fusion, we felt that our project did a, its job is to fuse the user researcher and the user, kind of bridging that gap with our lightweight Unity package to make it easy for user researchers, um, inclusive annotations so that the user could provide uh, feedback to user researchers, um, as well as you know having our insightful data dashboard and for the user researchers um, to see that annotation and to overall have a better VR experience for everyone involved. Take away some uh, conclusions, yeah. Awesome. Um, I think that for us, we felt that we learned that the technology is ready, but the workflows for creating inclusive VR experiences are not. Um, and there's still a long way to go for accessibility support in XR. Um, we believe that like tools exist to make XR more inclusive, but cannot really be as good as developer supported features. Um, examples of tools that already exist are walk-in VR for Steam VR, comfy menu for VR chat, and so much more that the community has built. Um, and what we found is that for developers like XR Access Resources page on the, their website is a great place to start for developers to learn more about what is already out there, what they can already use to create a more um, inclusive uh, project or game or product. Um, and yeah, I think the biggest takeaway for us is that inclusivity is an ongoing conversation. It's never a checkbox and never a list that we just complete. Um, yeah. Um, I think that all of us have like taken, each personally has come out of the um, hackathon and the project with some, some new um, learnings and ideas of like what we want to do, um, what, what we, how we want to change the way we look at things. And yeah, I don't know if anyone wants to update the, um, I guess everyone, how, how they're doing in that department. Yeah. Oh, I guess I can talk for Daisy. Um, Daisy is uh, currently thinking about choosing XR accessibility as her thesis topic for her Berkeley master's. Um, which is really exciting. Uh, Yan, you wanna? Yeah, and um, as mentioned earlier, um, I am going to start my PhD in computer science Cornell in two weeks. Um, I'm actively talking to different professors to find collaboration in the XR space and robotics. Um, I am, um, now that I've learned a lot of where the resources are in terms of accessibility, um, I'm working to make my current and previous XR experiences more accessible for a diverse range of communities. Hey, uh, yes, um, I after I finished the hackathon, like I realized how far powerful the Unity and like how can I implement all the like advanced technology in this software. So like after that, I'm learning it, and luckily I also have a chance to teaching the how to use the Unity to like high schoolers these days. And for me, just like to just, um, I felt I feel like I have more accessibility resources and tools um, for future projects. Yeah, and I think we want to shout out to the XR Access community. Like, we definitely thank you so much for all the help and support that we received throughout the hackathon. Um, we definitely would could not have done it without basically everyone here, the community. Um, 
And yeah, I think it means a lot to us. Um, specifically, we have access from the XR Access mentors who connected us with um, people who can give us insights on like what we're missing, what we need to make, um, as well as connect us with experts to bridge kind of the knowledge gap and help us quickly get eyes on the project so that we can quickly get feedback and improve on what we had. For the future of the project, there are some possibilities um, such as we can that we can do, such as you know, cleaning up the code and writing up better documentation. Um, some things that just things that we can't do within the time scale of the hackathon. Um, we would also want to release it as a package um, to download or as an asset store package to kind of get out of the store. Uh, we also want to implement additional features after more conversations and iterations with the community, um, such as you know the annotation tags or annotation sentiment. Um, and finally, just overall more testing um, with the like with different communities about uh, whether or not our you know project is something that actually could be used by developers and um, users alike. Um, and that will be the end of our um, presentation. Thank you so much for spending this morning with us. Um, I think it's time for a Q&A, um, but yeah, thank you. Awesome, thanks so much guys, this, this, is, this is fantastic. Um, yeah, definitely open it up to, to Q&A from the audience. Um, I would love to hear more about uh, just thinking about how developers can integrate this into their projects. Um, I know that's one of the really challenging parts that we've found for XR accessibility is getting, you know, a lot of developers, they want to make their stuff accessible, but it's difficult and time consuming and so on and so forth. And so really making that integration process as, as smooth as possible um, I think is really important for uh, for making getting developers to actually use it, right? So I, I would love to hear a little bit more about that. About um, you know when you made it as a, a Unity plugin, um, what what considerations were going into that, and what do you think helps in terms of making it easier for people to kind of plug and play into their apps? Hey, Jason, you mind jumping back to the data flow slide? Sure. Yeah, and you want to take this? Um, yeah, so obviously it was a prototype um, and there was some cleaning up to do, um, but we, so when you import our package, um, we provide um, several general purpose um, C-sharp scripts that you can use, um, but um, we will definitely update the documentation and API to make um, the, um, getting up to speed faster for everyone. Um, Hung, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I can add a little bit more. Um, I think for us, our, because our plugin is only the user testing part of uh, the kind of workflow, like we are imagining a developer who is interested in making their project more accessible kind of pulling in our project and like doing very little configuration. So like maybe the configuration is very simply like what buttons can they press to trigger the um, the annotation system? Um, and like maybe what, you know, what, what text-to-speech or speech-to-text engine they want to use. Um, once they configure those things, then like now they have a plugin that is ready for, for them to receive feedback on their project like it is not a solution, right? It is not um, like an all-in-one solution for uh, accessibility, but it, I think it is a good start. And making sure that there's only one arrow from the Unity VR project to our Unity package is like one, one important step that we want to like make sure we focus on to make it really easy to integrate um, into their game. So like that one arrow of just, okay, here's all the configurations and suddenly the moment they call maybe one function or um, 
to configure like everything else is set up so that they are ready to receive feedback right away. I hope that answers the question. Awesome. No, that that's really helpful. And I'm imagining for the, the WebSocket server, that's something that if people were serious about, they could like set up their own server, set up their own kind of workflow for where the comments could go. Yes. So um, for the WebSocket, um, we imagine um, a testing setting where, like for example, we invite people in a different room and the UX researcher can sit in a different room. But um, obviously, we can always always um, expand it to a cloud-based solution so that um, people can sit from different continents of the world and can still get data. Right. I think the technology is definitely just WebSocket. And so um, we talked about like this is easily imaginable. Like instead of running on Nyan's computer at the demo, um, we just run it on like a Google Cloud instance um, mm -hmm. and it would just work the same way. Gotcha. Yeah, it, it's also interesting to think about uh, not only making it easier in the workflow for the developers, but for the the researchers as well, right? I'm 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 curious if you thought about uh, you know, baking kind of best practices or other things on the the researcher side. Um, what what were the real factors that went into to the the UX for the UXers? <laughs> I can speak a bit to that. Um, so at my previous position, um, I was in charge of um, conducting user testing, um, uh, conducting user testing sessions um, during the COVID era. So we could not meet up with um, these users. Um, these users had a, a range of um, needs um, varying from like, uh, low vision and low hearing to low mobility. Um, and so it was a struggle for us um, at my previous position to really understand um, the correct solution in which to to like can, like do a basic or, or quote unquote um, basic user testing session with any kind of individual in this COVID era where sentation and um, needs are of high priority. Um, and so, Taking that experience um, and applying to this project, um, I think was uh, uh, I, there was like um, uh, there was less of a learning curve in terms of like applying or understanding what user researchers need um, because I myself was in that position um, just like a year ago, um, and so everything from understanding what a user is seeing when they encounter a problem or what a user is trying to say when they're trying to give feedback. Um, to what kinds of inputs um, do users want to see or would like to see when they're actually giving feedback? Um, those like uh, uh, all like the the hiccups um, that I encountered in my previous position, um, we tried to solve with this type of tool. Um, and so, just an example of that would be like in my previous position, um, a user would quite literally have to hook up their VR headset to their laptop and that process it's like uh, for it to, to um, record their VR view inside like a laptop interface. Um, and that technical process itself had so many hurdles from like, oh, I don't have the right wire or, oh, my internet is down. I can't do anything about that. Um, um, to, I actually, uh, I, I need glasses for my VR headset. Like, what do I do? Like, I, the VR headset actually does not fit. Or, like, do I have to take the VR headset on and off to make sure that I'm recording properly? Like, so just the recording process itself, um, when it comes to just getting data on a VR experience was very, very cumbersome. Um, and so uh, by kind of focusing on those problem points, um, we kind of created this type of solution. And I'm going to add a little bit more to that. Um... I think on this chart, on the right-hand side, I think Yen did a really good job. We actually didn't think it was in scope to create a whole like <laughs> web, web server. Um, and so we were able to kind of show an example of what the UX for a user researcher, user researcher would look like, but we definitely didn't have a lot of time put in to like make it as, you know, as, as inclusive as we would want. Um, I think in our mind also the, de the developer, this is like targeting maybe closer to like more indie development where the developer is working very closely with like the user researcher, if not being the same person. 
Um, and so we were we were thinking of it more like a loop, um, where like the use they send out a build um, that is like, oh, I want to test this. And so then they ask for the feedback to their communities, and then they would receive the feedback in the user researcher kind of portal. Um, I think it could be better. It could be significantly better than what we had, um, but I think we we just wanted to show proof of concept. And then they would go back to their build project, integrate the feedback, and then send another build. Um, so I think that is the, the base kind of like experience there for the user researcher, but definitely a lot could be improved on. Um, on that side. Gotcha. Uh, awesome. Well, any other uh, questions for our, our hackers here today? Love to, to hear more from the audience about, um, you know, your uh, anybody here is involved in user testing or is interested in, in uh, more about kind of the hackathon process. Uh, really love to, to open it up to the community here. I know Ren was uh, was one of our mentors on the project. Ren, if if you uh, I don't know if you're you're able to come off mute, but if if you can, I'd love to hear kind of about your your experience as a as a mentor. Ah, technical difficulties, alas. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, I, I can say, at least for myself, I was also a mentor on the project. Um, I think it, it was fantastic to see uh, you all kind of reach out on the accessibility channel and say, hey, we'd like to, to you know, we're working on this from the accessibility perspective. We'd love to get some advice because I think I know for, for most of us uh, from XR Access, we were mentoring remotely and the, the hackathon ended up being pretty kind of campus centric. Um, so, uh, it was fantastic to, to get, you know, to have you guys come to us because we can't as much come to you. Um, I, I'd love to hear from you from, uh, either your, your perspective or from the perspectives of, of, of kind of other teams at the hackathon you were talking to, um, what, what is that perspective when it comes to remote, remote mentorship, especially at this kind of in-person hackathon, um, what what was your experience and what would you say is is the the factor of kind of reaching out versus letting letting the the people come to you uh for for our hackers here um from my perspective um i think uh discord was a really um D discord was actually really nice um so there were some mentors that we interact with in person, um, but again, some um, like yourself, Dylan, that we interact with remotely. And I know this is kind of cheesy to say, but the best thing about Discord is that you have real-time notes about like, what is going on at every single moment. So you can like actually track back to what, what people have said, um, have, like, post images, um, like annotate in files or po like post videos or just share different kinds of information in a really readily available way. And you get like a, host of mentors instead of maybe just one mentor that you're talking to. Um, and so from that perspective, um, Discord as like a tool to interact remotely with different kinds of mentors um, was really effective. Nice. From my oh, perspective, I think um, I didn't realize how much help we needed until we reached out <laughs> yeah. and got feedback. Um, I, I think to me, that's probably the biggest hurdle um in receiving remotes how like i can imagine if i didn't if we didn't reach out like we would be in such a bad spot like we we but like we wouldn't have known that unless we reached out um whereas like um what if it was like you know on on site obviously um it would be easier for someone to come by check in and, and realize how bad how how bad of a spot we were in um and like hopefully help us um but I think that if the hackathon, um, it depends on the hackathon, but like the hackathon promoted kind of like reaching out always, which I think um, that material reality hack did do that. Like I, I did feel like we were at, like we were told, oh, reach out anyways. And that's what we did. And I think that was really a game changer for us. 
and our projects. Yeah, it can and, be very, I was, go, sorry, go ahead. Uh, um, um, I just wanted to add that um, I've, I felt like um, the hackathon created a very um, responsive environment. So like whenever we have a question, we can just ask on Discord and then any mentor would just reply right away. From my other experience with um, remote, um, I guess, collaboration is that usually I send an email and then I get a response like a, a week later and usually I already lose that train of thought. So I, I thought the hackathon really created that um, very um, responsive environment that I really like. Um, I also appreciate we have a mentor on site. So for example, um, Roland would usually come back our table to um, provide um, mentorship and um, provide answers that we wanted to ask. Awesome. Yeah, Roland, Roland is fantastic. I'm really glad he was able to, to be there in person. Uh, and yeah, it can be very easy to fall into that trap of, oh yeah, I know everything I need to know, right? Um, yeah, that's uh, that that may not always be the case, especially as someone who doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Well, I think unless there's any other questions for the audience, um, we can probably wrap up here. But uh, thank you all so much for for coming and presenting. Um, this is this is fabulous and. Uh, hopefully, we will see you again at uh, at another hackathon somewhere. Um, I'll say if, if anybody here is interested in helping to organize a disability focused hackathon, uh, we are doing that. Um, we have a hackathon channel in our Slack, uh, and I'll just go ahead and post those links from the beginning again. Um, but if folks are interested in kind of a, a disability centric hackathon, that is something that we are putting together. So. Uh, please, you know, come on down, uh, try it out, uh, or get involved, and uh, we'll hope to see you all soon. All right, thanks so much, everybody. Awesome. Have a great one. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Much. Bye. Thank thanks, you. everyone. Bye.